Candaules was king of Lydia in modern-day Turkey and ruled in the late 8th century BC. Now King Candaules fell passionately in love with his own wife and thought that she was the most beautiful woman in the world. Among his bodyguards, there was a fellow he particularly liked, whose name was Gyges. And with this Gyges, King Candaules discussed his most important business. In particular, Candaules used to praise his wife's beauty in extravagant terms. One day, the king, who had to come to a bad end, said to Gyges, it appears that you don't believe how beautiful my wife is. Well, men trust their eyes more than their ears. Bring it about that you see her naked. Gyges gave a cry of horror. Master, he said, what an improper suggestion. Look at the queen with no clothes on. No, no. You know what they say about women. When she takes off her clothes, she does away with her shame. Right and wrong were distinguished long ago and must be learned from. One rule is that everyone should look to his own affairs. I believe that your wife is the most beautiful of women, but I beg you, do not ask me to contravene our customs. And thus, Gyges resisted, terrified of what might happen to him. The king, however, said, Take courage, Gyges, and fear neither me nor my wife. I'm not testing you, and no harm will come to you from the queen. I'll arrange it so that she doesn't even know that you've seen her. Look, I'll hide you behind the open door to our bedroom. My wife will follow me to bed. Now near the door, there's a chair, and on it she'll put her clothes as she takes them off, one by one. You'll be able to watch her at your ease. And when she goes from the chair towards the bed, she'll have her back to you, and you can slip out. Be careful then that she doesn't see you as you go through the door. Gyges, unable to escape, was ready to act. When bedtime came, Candaules brought him to the chamber, and immediately afterwards the queen arrived. She entered and put her clothes on the chair, and as she did so, Gyges watched. Then, just as she turned her back and was going to bed, he softly slipped out. But the queen saw him as he went. She realised at once what her husband had done, but she didn't cry out in her shame or give any sign that she'd noticed. Instead, she silently resolved to have her revenge. For among the Lydians, as with most barbarian races, it is wholly disgraceful for anyone, even a man, to be seen naked. At dawn the next morning, she sent for Gyges after preparing her most trustworthy servants. Since he often attended the queen, Gyges answered the summons without any suspicion. Gyges, she said as soon as he arrived, there are two courses open to you, and I give you the choice between them. Either kill Candaules and seize the throne and me as your wife, or die on the spot so that never again will your obedience to the king tempt you to see what you have no right to. At all events, one of you must die. For a time, Gyges was too astonished to speak. Eventually, he found his voice and begged her not to force him into such a choice. But it was no good. He soon saw that he was faced with the alternatives of murdering his master or being murdered himself. He chose to survive. Tell me, he said, since you force me against my will to kill the king, how shall we set on him? It'll happen in the same place where he showed me to you naked, she said, and while he's sleeping. They made everything ready, and the queen would not let Gyges go, so that there was absolutely no opportunity for him to escape his dilemma. Night came, and he followed her into the bedroom. She put a knife into his hand and hid him behind the same door as before. Then, when Candaules was asleep, he crept from behind the door and struck. And so Gyges usurped the Lydian throne and married the queen. The Lydian people, indignant at the murder of their king, Candaules, were ready for fighting. But they agreed with Gyges' supporters that he could rule if the Delphic Oracle declared that he should. And the oracle chose in favour of Gyges, and so his royal power was established. Nevertheless, the Delphic priestess added that Candaules family would have their revenge on Gyges' descendants, but in the fifth generation, a prophecy to which no one paid any attention until it was actually 